Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over the new prime times. Every day I go over the new content that's released in NHL 21. We only cover the ones that are about 80 and above again because the game is just released. The overalls aren't going to be anything crazy, but we try to see if there's some value cards that we can look for on the auction house um, or if you get them in pack pools, if they're worth keeping. I do need to mention, guys, if you want for the um, most up-to-date card releases, if you want to see the cards, maybe you can't check out my YouTube channel, um, go and check out my Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, Sleeveless Gaming. Every day I will post the new cards that are released on my Instagram almost as, you know immediately after launch um, of the event or the content so just give me a follow there and uh, I would appreciate it. but let's get into the newest prime times for October 14th all right we'll kick things off with the Minnesota Wilds Nick Bustad in NHL 20 this was one of the best cards just because of the fact he was six foot six two eighteen when you combine the fact that he's got speed certain if you can get that activated you've got a great card on your hands you're not going to want to use him at center because he's only got 73 face up but again for anyone that's just building a team free to play things like that because of his overall he's going to be extremely cheap a six foot six winger with 85 speed and 88 wrist shot power is nice early on for anyone that is free to play and looking for a sneaky good card um, not a bad option at all, and I've actually been kind of impressed with these low overall prime times because they've been putting the good synergies on them. Definitely makes them viable. Next up, we've got the 81 overall, Jacob Markstrom, obviously one of the best goaltenders in NHL 20 at 6'6". However, in NHL 21, with the new changes to goalie stats for anyone that's above 6'2", or 6'0", really, there is a cap on a lot of these stats, so you'll see it speed, agility, rebound control, shot recovery, all capped at 78 so unfortunately, because he's so large um, and takes up a lot of the net, it really hinders his ability to be based on his stats, which do matter. So in this game, I would actually avoid the Markstrom. However, low overall or low early on because um, everyone else's goaltender stats aren't flying off the handle yet because, you know, other than like Carey Price or Vasilevsky, um, because everyone's already a low overall, being six foot six does have its advantages, and because those stats aren't all that much lower than anyone else's, it might be usable, but this would be a card I would avoid or sell early on. Then we've got the 82 overall Anton Kudobin from the Dallas Stars. Now again, he's five foot eleven, so for the most part, he's been pretty much useless in in, in hockey ultimate team just based on how goaltenders work. However, with how the progression works for goaltenders now, his stats are much higher. If you take a look, again, rebound control, shot recovery, speed, and agility for Anton Kudobin, who's only one overall point higher than Jacob Markstrom. It's 83, 83, um, 83 for rebound control and 84 shot recovery. Now, you want to have a lower aggression in NHL 21 and 85, you know, does kind of uh, make him come out and play the shot a little bit more, which isn't bad for short side wristers, but it's the one-timers where um, you're going to see a bit of an issue because he is so far out of his net. Um, you want lower aggression in that case, so this would be a hard pass for me. Moving on to the 82 overall, Brendan Saad, now a member of the Colorado Avalanche. What a trade that was. And he does come with the Gladiator Synergy, one of the lesser useful ones, especially on forwards with body checking strength, defensive awareness, and slap shot power. Does have 84 speed across the board and a mid-80 shot, mid shot, which isn't bad at all. Uh, for anyone looking for a free-to-play team that's stuck with the, you know, the low 80 cards, it's not a bad option. At 6'1", you could do worse in terms of size. And if you can get the Gladiator Synergy activated, uh, well, it just helps out a little bit more. But not a terrible card, but nothing really um, all that special either. Then we We've got the 82 overall, Kevin Shattenkirk from the Anaheim Ducks now signing with it. does have the team-based synergy of Balanced, which isn't a bad synergy. Um, better for, definitely for defensive players, um, but not one that I would go after in terms of team synergies. Is right-handed, which is rare and hard to come by. However, has great skating attributes for a defenseman. 85 across the board. His shot is, is pretty rough, but... Point shots have been so useless in NHL 21 that shot doesn't even matter because no one should be taking point shots, in my opinion. Only 82 defensive awareness, though. But if you were looking for a cheap defenseman that is right-handed, again, right-handed defensemen are rare and harder to come by. This isn't bad at all because of that 85 skating. And then the headliner of today's release, it is the 84 overall Alex Petrangelo now of the Vegas Golden Knights, which I hate because he's so good and I'm a Sharks fan. Six foot three, two ten, elite size, one of the best right-handed defenders in NHL 20. However, with um, you know NHL 21, speed is a definite priority for defensemen, so you need to pair him with someone a little bit faster. Kale McCarr would be a great option. 
Um, but uh, in terms of you know speed at 83, not bad. His base card, a lot of people are going to ask me this again. I'm going to talk about it in terms of progression. So all the primetime cards and team of the weeks and things like that are going to be released. Um, you'll get a plus one for every stat except for skating. Skating goes up 0.5. It's a background stat that you're not going to see. So sometimes... The base pitcher, Angelo, is an 84 overall, and he went up a plus one. He got a prime time. His overall didn't increase um, because not all of his stats went up plus one. His skating, um, you know, did kind of stay the same for the most part. So keep that in mind when you're uh, when you're wondering why that, you know, this one's an 84 and the base is still an 84. This one is better. He did receive a plus one to a, a, almost all of his stats. Shot accuracy went up to 80. Power is not bad, but again, those aren't something you want to worry about. But his defensive awareness at 88 is nice. This is a gr good right-handed defenseman um, that you could probably get for a little bit cheaper that you can pair with someone like Goss to spare who's a faster left-handed defenseman um, not a bad card at all for early on in the game again because right-handed cards are so rare to come by in NHL 21 so guys that is going to do it for today's content let me know what you think in the comments section down below and don't forget to follow my Instagram if you are looking for the um, you know if you're not able to get my YouTube videos for the content up I'll have it up on my on my Instagram so you guys can check out the new cards when they are released. So guys, thank you for checking out today's content and I will see you guys tomorrow.